Hello, everybody, and welcome to something that I was kind of expecting to have out like three years ago, but screw it, here we are. So, uh, One Vision Suboptimal, at least the first half of it, uh, for reasons that will uh, be explained later. Um, it was originally just going to be the entire thing in one fell swoop, but here we go. So, our story begins, as it always does, just booting up the One Vision mod, you know, kind of an important part of that. This time we start off with Mr. Blue Collar Man. A very standard guy, since uh, the uh, stats across the board this time around have been way more standardized. We do the usual beginning here. Uh, you know, meet up with Lancelot, backstab Kasha a little bit, tell everybody not to trust the shiny golden guy, continue not trusting the shiny golden guy, and uh, yeah, refuse to uh, have anything to do with him. And of course, naturally, take his weapon. Backstab everybody again, as you do. Backstab that guy, backstab that guy. They just run around punching things. They're very nice people. They're really taking this well, all things considered. Um, you know, that one lady b was the enemy. Apparently they couldn't figure out how to spell her name. It's fine. It's fine. They're trying. Anyway, the backstabbing continues. You know, pretty standard, strong start here. Uh, the reason that we're doing this is essentially to get some better equipment right off the bat because I don't want to, uh, well, I can't go to the store, so... Alright, um, actually I should probably explain the rule set by this point for anyone that's unfamiliar with the rules of the suboptimal challenge. Basically the idea is we cannot go to the store, we cannot take any optional fights, we can't intentionally giga grind unless it's hilarious. Um, for example, the first suboptimal run, uh, there was a case where it was honestly a lot easier just to leave it on uh, on AI, block the guy in with, uh, with shadows, and uh, just have the AI auto-firing a light crossbow at a guy like 14 levels higher for about the next two hours. Anyway, so moving on, uh, we make sure that everybody else is taken out, take out Papal, and take all of that sweet experience, as well as make sure that all the items are collected. This gets up, us up to level 4. Now I should point out right off the bat, there is a lot said about levels in this game, and honestly, they do not matter as much as you think they do. Uh, the reason that I'm collecting levels is entirely to manipulate the spawn system later, but any dang ways. Uh, we also get a few extra SP. Again, we're taking no uh, extra fights, so that extra SP gives us counter hit and stuff like that. Um, anyway, we continue using the OP plot sword that we'll never see again uh, to, uh, to continue carving the crap out of everybody. Once again, we wipe out the entire map. And we set up the Order of Long Nights and Impossible Odds. He just wants to be a blue-collar man. Anyway, we get our starting team here, the Impossible Amazon, my favorite spawned unit in the game. Uh, basically an Amazon that starts off with a short sword and shield. Can't actually... well, she can use it, she just doesn't have the skills for it. Um, does actually come with uh, pretty solid stats. Uh, the uh, starting units are actually uh, specialized towards their particular things these days. So Yeva, uh, Emily... I think it's, it's supposed to just be Emily. I don't know why I'm pronouncing it Emily. Anyway, redonkulous dex and agility, though. She's basically blowing Sarah out of the water. Um, Freeze, uh, Freezeweed. And uh, Kira, uh, who's going to be our uh, murder cleric uh, going forward. Um, I decided partway through this uh, initial section that, you know what? The cleric just has to be the violent one with a stick. Uh, Jalesha, the, uh, the rune fencer. And this time around, we're going to try to not make the mistake of accidentally deleting a class. See, there's one more rule to this rule set that I forgot to mention. Everybody has to be using, within reason, the lowest... Uh, well, everyone can only have one class available. And aside from cases where I, you know, accidentally come to, uh, uh, to have some oddly specific class that... Like, if I get multiple units of some impossible, unique class all of a sudden towards the end of the game or something, within reason... If there's a lowest class available, I have to use it. Uh, so the highest class at any point, for the most part, can't be used. Um, so everyone has to have, have a unique class. That's basically what I'm trying to get at here. So these days, Canopus comes with three skills. That's actually pretty handy because it allows him to particularly resist certain things. It's actually why I like running him with a hammer these days because hammers are pretty threatening. He does tend to run into a lot of them up in the front. And so that's nice. So our cleric actually comes with exorcism because, again, it's one vision. It's that that's a pretty solid improvement there. Funnily enough, uh, Kashua always has exorcism uh, in the base game. She just never uses it because of the cost of uh, the dang thing. Um, it's why it costs less in OV. So we get Sarah, our rogue, and Voltaire, our knight, as well as Phoenicia, the Kanyayard freaking ninja, whatever. Um, now, that'll become relevant later. She will be around for a while until she won't be. Anyway, um, so we continue on. 
please bear in mind that I have made Blue Collar Man a wizard at this point. Uh, since we cannot use Warrior, since Vice cannot be changed out of his class, we are allowed to use healers uh, because uh, Kashua is a unique class of healer, so that's fine. Nibbeth the Archmage up there with his, uh, with his uh, different shenanigans, you know. I believe we were actually playing this with uh, world mode enabled as well, uh, which allowed for increased spawns, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while. I should actually explain by this point um, that if uh, if you didn't know, you can actually get a hold of a, uh, a necromancer mark as well as your first couple necromancy spells uh, by more or less 100%ing uh, these first few uh, fights here against the necromancers. First one's guaranteed to drop Living Dead, giving you access to zombies. Um, stealing from Nibbeth enough times will uh, give you uh, a, a Necromancer mark, and uh, dealing with his uh, ghosts will give you a couple of other uh, spells for the Necromancer. Any dang ways. Um, I'm pretty sure most folks know that by this point, but either way, if you didn't, there it is. So we do the usual strat for Nibbeth, namely sacrifice everybody to get whoever can close to him and beat the crap out of him before he can summon anything else. Don't worry about the rest of the uh, entire thing. Um... All right, so we got through all this. Blue Collar Man, the wizard. Uh, we move on to this team. Templeton, the wizard over there, just continuing to sound cool. I, I don't know, I continue to find that name... Uh, I, I like that name. And it's entirely because my son became obsessed with uh, watching Boss Baby, Baby a while ago. And just the sound of the name is neat. Any day, anyways. So this one is no real trouble, as you'd kind of expect. I mean, it's basically a tutorial fight. Um, this was just showing off the fact that we would have lost somebody, but stun doing its work, you know? Stun and a lot of other uh, uh, different uh, debuffs are going to be absolutely carrying us through this run, just so you know. So we skip through this. I love this line. <laughs> Dude, you stubborn bastard, just die. Uh, anyway. Uh, so yeah, Brezen the sword fighter who actually uses a sword because it's OV. Anyways, Leonard does the Lenar thing. We can't use our knight currently because he is the only knight that's allowed in the party. Again, you know, showing one for every team because this is the suboptimal mode after all. Um, so we get Faded Circle on Jalisha, giving those 100% uh, guaranteed hits. Get Mother's Blessing on Kira to double up on healing whenever we need it in a clutch situation. Uh, we get Recruit on Vice because we can actually use... Uh, uh, we, well, it's the only class with the Recruit that we've got access to right now. And uh, we can actually control him, uh, again, since it's OV. I, I feel like I'm probably going to mention that a lot. Um, uh, we got uh, Canopus coming in with what Hopango wins for uh, his regeneration, as well as fire magic, because I like to use the uh, fire debuffs on him, and the buffs as well. Um, basically, he's got Strength and Breach on that uh, thing there. Uh, we've got Sarah coming in with Steel. Uh, Felicia going for the double attack and uh, going for the double stun fists. Um, this is actually, I believe, right uh, on the cusp of the update that turned them into stun fists. They still did poison at this point. <laughs> um, anyway, we move on to, uh, to here. We agreed to save Sestina because she is an absolute monster in OV. Um, more or less, she's going to be carving through this entire team. We don't have to worry about her too much. Um, you know, it, it, our, uh, our murder cleric kind of off to an iffy start there, getting taken out immediately. But she will have a higher kill count than much of the rest of the team by the end of the first chapter. So it's fine. She'll get there. She'll get there. Um, so we have a recruit chance of 5% on that guy. Don't, don't believe it. In, oh, wait. It does actually end up happening. Right, because Alizar is still on the team, I believe. Um, so we do pretty solid damage uh, with uh, uh, with our caster there. Uh, start getting some heavy armor. Um, you know, nothing too special yet. I'm continuing to have one of each team. We get a little bit of extra stuff because uh, Sestina is not one that we spawn in with. So we get to uh, kind of get a little bit of extra XP on the Valkyrie. It won't really make much of a difference. Uh, we recruit Jaeger the Berserker. And uh, we get Rand Wolf the Beast Tamer. As well as Elzar the Archer. So... You know, everyone has their conversation. We re-equip uh, these guys a little bit. Go talk to Tardy, as you do. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Jalisha becomes a knight because we can use those again. At which point we go fight the river fight. And it goes about as well as you'd expect. We miss recruit. But, uh, you know, it's the river fight. It's not super hard. As long as you continue pressing, you can more or less wrap it up before your casualties bleed out. My phone says hi, apparently. Oh, well. 6% uh, chance to recruit. Doesn't work. Smack her in the face. 73% chance to recruit. Um, that doesn't work either. You know, it just wasn't really a good day for negotiation that day. So we start using Hex to start wearing that guy down. We take a few bleed-outs, um, you know, 
as you do. It overall could have gone better. I was trying to uh, get greedy with the extra drops because, again, we can't go to the store, so it would be nice to have some extra gear. Early on, it's worth sacrificing some of your starters in order to get some of that better equipment. Uh, mostly because if you run into a class uh, that you are going to have a hard time using because they can't use any gear, well, obviously that's going to be a bit of a uh, downside. So we got Sarah still as a rogue, learning to steal things. Next is Gamp. Now, this is going to come as a shocker, but we're going to do the usual thing where you basically just target one guy and make the fight end early. Um, I did try to go for a few recruits here. I don't actually remember how that went. I think we got the lizard. Did we get the lizard? Yeah, we did end up getting the lizard, and then we just smacked the crap out of Berta, and that was that. Uh, which gave us Shauna the warrior. I knew we got him from somewhere, as as well as Folk the beast tamer. Yet Folk does not have a great journey later. Chawana, though, is still on the current team, so that's nice. Also, I kind of wish you could keep their original uh, color sprites uh, when you recruit them, because that gray looks really nice. Anyway, uh, so on and on we go. We get some light stuff. I was going for this weird build with Jaleesa, Jaleesha. This works on knights as dumb as it sounds, because it gives them counter at multiple different ranges. It gives them, uh, uh, basically just gives them a few different options if you want to go for faster or want to go for longer range, and they've got enough bulk that it honestly doesn't matter that they don't have a shield. So, moving on, we move to Easy Goliath. Um, now, this is going to come as a shocker, but uh, having the high ground on a team that basically consists of nobodies is going to be kind of easy. I know! It's amazing! So anyway, yeah, we haven't... I mean, this is still Chapter 1. We haven't really had to do too much that's special. So we stay in roll, as you do! As you do. Tyrannico is definitely kind of carrying stuff as it does. It's just such a dang good skill. I mean... Hell, I'd say that it'd get nerfed at some point, but it just feels too good. Actually, I forgot to point this one out. This is a fun thing you can do with Berserk and props. If you target a bush at the bottom of a hill, you can hit somebody on the top of the hill with Berserk, because it doesn't check for elevation. Anyway, um, so yeah, she goes down. Everyone has a conversation that goes astoundingly well. Everyone agrees on absolutely everything. Oh, wait, no it doesn't. So anyway, then everybody dies. So then we do the same fight, except going up the hill this time. I find it funny that I have seen two modern reviews of this game that criticize this fight for the fact that you have to fight out of the place that you had to fight into. Like, what else do you want here? They Then they were just fine even though they were surrounded? This isn't Fire Emblem. Anyway, so, uh, they get asleeped, they get stealed, then Decay happens, and that thing is super threatening. Um, yeah, Decay is one of the biggest problems right now, because uh, we are going to be at a... Uh, at a bit of a limited situation when it comes to our gear, meaning that if we end up losing our bonus damage because of decay, uh, that could be a bit of a problem. Um, get our first heavy spear. Actually, no, I think this is like our second or third heavy spear. Never mind. Um, we already had bronze helms. Whatever. This is a slog. It's a, a, a complete slugging match. But slowly but surely, we work our way up. I've been burning through some of the um, uh, some of the early uh, uh, stones up to this point in order to uh, keep units from bleeding out. I uh, just uh, just kind of been doing that to try to preserve the units that have uh, close to uh, to uh, s uh, close to uh, second skill rank. Um, anyway, when we move on to chapter two, we get to the air cell fight. You know, the one where they say they didn't murder everybody right before you go in and you murder everybody. So we do uh, what? Uh, th okay, so I like to uh, to call this the staggering strat here. Basically, you have your faster units go around the sides. You push the middle units towards your back line. Um, in order to claim the center kind of choke point on both ends, at which point you deal with the ones in the middle, and then you push forward a little bit faster. It's it's a minor speed improvement, and usually requires on getting a decent bit of pressure, which, as you can see here, uh, there's a lot of blocks going around in all directions because of the rain, but then again, Tyrannico coming in and putting everybody right the hell to sleep. What are you going to do, right? So uh, start having Canopus harass their healer so that we can actually break through Hopongo because it's pretty busted in the early game uh, since uh, Regenerate will basically give you a free Mending Leaf every few ticks. Uh, we lose our uh, our knight with the weird dual wield build. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that, that should have seen that coming. So their uh, Cleric gets stunned. Uh, we have their... Uh, uh, we have Aerosol basically cornered at this point for the most part. She's got one way she can go, but... We're getting her towards the front line. She can still throw a massive punishment, though. Um, you know, we're still kind of stuck in the middle here. Unfortunately, the, uh, uh, the little stagger strat didn't quite work out, but again, we have Aerosol more or less uh, pinned. 
Uh, so while we're trying to get other units over to her, we're still trying to break through the center. Um, Jalisha ends up taking a bleed out. Uh, we have, uh, we get our first, uh, longbow, I believe. But then finally the middle starts breaking. We start having the, uh, the two healers, Archer, and I believe the Berserker is off doing something else at this point. All, uh, teaming up on Aracel. Um, Kashua being more of an offensive caster is a bit more, uh, useful this time around. I believe she actually did get access to Spirit Surge in the vanilla game, but you'd kind of have to go out of your way to teach it to her. So, anyway, they eventually overpower her because, again, she is just an archer, while everybody else just tries to collect loot. So we get more lifelines, we get more levels. Everybody's at 6 or 7. We're starting to fully drop behind at this point. Uh, then we get to Zepen, who you'd think would be a massive problem. Instead, he's just kind of a massive perv over there, but what are you going to do? Anyway, this was about the, uh, about the point where I ended up losing my first... Well, almost at the point where I uh, had the first uh, device of this particular run uh, swapped out for a different one. It was more or less the same model of device, but it took a little bit to uh, to get the numbers reassigned, so you probably won't see much of a difference here. We get the Grace Boots. I just love the idea of having uh, the uh, Terrain Boots available earlier in the game, but, you know, whatever. Uh, get Water Crystals to use as a Water Buff later. Um, for some reason, it's being very slow to load. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, Felicia doing the whole wacky thing, like, you know, getting herself whacked unconscious. Uh, we get some, uh, Mending Seed stuff, we get some dude recruited, and then we start getting people back to life. Um, now, unfortunately, Blue Collar Man gets taken out. Uh, but, eventually, we get enough people close enough to just keep beating him in that corner that, you know, they don't have enough people on hand to drop everyone that we send their way. I believe the Lizard got him with a Mighty Strike, I believe the, uh, Ninja got him with a Double... Um, I believe he might have been poisoned, and then finally the Beast Tamer finished him with a Heavy Spear. So we got a Unicorn Horn that we'll never be able to use, because we can't go to the store. Anyway, moving on. So we got a Conda the Lizard here. He is a uh, 2HK specialist, oddly enough. So that's whatever. He's, he's a Water Lizard Samurai thing. <laughs> sure, why not? Um, I left the Grease Boots on Blue Color Man, because of course. Um, he, needs his, uh, he needs his Rain Boots. He doesn't want to get his business suit dirty. Um, we, uh, you know, we have Randolph, or Randwolf still doing his thing here. He'll, he'll be more relevant later, don't worry about it. Uh, we get Demons Pact. That'll become bizarrely relevant. I literally just picked this up as a joke and then realized that it was absolutely calculated for the next fight. Um, Sarah going for a knockback specialty. Canopus getting those instills going. Um, I haven't gone double, uh, double magic types on him yet. We'll do that later. Uh, her going for the, uh, the Aug Light and the more cudgels and the more counter hitting and all that kind of business. Uh, just basically trying to get as many options unlocked as possible right now. So then we get to Aerosel 2, alright? So we're not actually trying to save Aerosel. We've already got a perfectly functional archer that's doing their job fantastically. Whatever. Actually, I'm pretty sure our default starting archer has higher dexterity than she does. I don't know how they rolled that so high. Like, Jesus, that damage. Um, anyway... So Aerosel does our usual thing of just being a Giga Skirmisher in the Thunderstorm here, just blocking everything, beating up everybody. But we have Mr. Miyongi over here, the, uh, the rogue. Now, interesting thing, by the way, um, so what are gremlins classed as? Turns out they're demons. I totally forgot about that, and it just so happens that the person that talks to demons went up to the thing that's classed as a demon. So I kept trying to recruit different things, but instead I got Mr. Miyongi over there. He passed out shortly after, but that's okay. That's okay. We still got him. Because I didn't realize at the time, and didn't really occur to me, that uh, gremlins have disgustingly high dexterity. Anyway, I went around cleaning up the map, got a glass pumpkin, got a familiar mark. Hopefully we'll be able to recruit uh, um, uh, friggin' Deneb later on, but we'll see. Uh, Kashua held up surprisingly well, considering she's just walking around in a swamp with a stick, but whatever. Um, kept trying to recruit people... It didn't really work. Kept sleep bombing people. That did. Um, and yeah, eventually ended up uh, just overpowering Vance. We, it, again, it's OV, so we're not really quite running into armor issues yet because we still have starter gear. Um, we're still, we've got access to a lot of tier 2 and 3 stuff. We're still managing to punch through decently well, especially with stuff like Mighty Strike just absolutely dominating. Um, so, Aerosol manages to survive, and we move right along here. Uh, we get access to Herbalism, we won't be able to use that, and a Focus Crystal. I think that was useful. I don't know. I forget. Um, 
Anyway, we start getting Gambazins for everybody, our second tier uh, light armor here. Uh, Aerosel coming in. So 42 decks on Aerosel. Keep that in mind for later. All right, so we get to uh, uh, Folk, the current Beast Tamer, um, over there. Uh, we have to replace our Archer temporarily because we can't fire Aerosel and we didn't want to kill her off. Again, it's suboptimal. I'm not going to directly go out of my way to kill off an AI unit unless it's hilarious to do so. That's more or less what it comes down to. If there's a fun reason to do so or a funny plot reason to do so, I will. But otherwise, it whatever happens, happens, and we roll with it. All right. So, you know, Folk is just here to harass stuff with his little dinky knife. Uh, so the uh, the Ninja River is an odd map. Uh, basically, the way this works is that the Ninja usually will charge forward. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we did not end up uh, getting the subdue on that thing. So the Ninja will charge forward usually. We'll end up uh, getting chances to recruit. As you can see, we made Randwolf the previous Beast Tamer, because uh, uh, the uh, Hawkman took over for that role. We have made him into the uh, the Animal Whisperer over there. So he gets us our octopus. He will be very useful for the course of this thing. As you may notice, he does a lot of damage. Um, he doesn't do too much for, I don't know, about the next chapter or so, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, there's Empowered Beast. We'll find out why that's amazing later. As you can see, we kind of missed with that 100 plus hit. Oh well. Anyway, so Aerosel does her Aerosel thing and snipes. Everyone just kind of throws stuff back and forth. But again, Rogue on the sidelines with Tyrannico just going in and putting units to sleep, as they do. Gets herself knocked out. Uh, turns out you can't recruit the leader. That was a bit of a shame. But uh, they get a lucky crit, and they end up taking out Aerosel. That's, that's a shame. Anyway, so everyone gets all pissed off because the Birdman told them to be. And uh, yeah, at that point, the Birdman beats the hell out of, uh, out of the guy. Most of most eh, most of both sides were pretty wiped out. I believe it was actually a finisher because uh, this was like four something months ago <laughs> when I did this run. Like it's weird thinking about it because literally uh, gas prices have doubled, friggin' wars broke out, the entire world changed in the time that it took to actually do a video on this run. Anyway, it's been it's been a weird year. All right, the last few years have been weird. Moving on, so he gets taken out. Um, and yeah, we uh, we unlock more ninjas for the rest of the team. We get an octopus at level 1, meaning that we have to use him. He is currently our lowest level. Now, when I said earlier that it has to be within reason, I mean, like, if I recruit multiple units at level 1, or there's, like, let's say, I'm pretty sure at some point in Chapter 4 we'll run into some moment where, like, a bunch of class marks for a bunch of classes I've never used before all drop at once. I don't want to be, like, 200 hours into this run and then suddenly run into a situation where it's physically impossible to progress because suddenly every single member of the team has to be at level one again and we haven't prepped for a level one run but again we'll we'll do as we do usually it's like i'll do i'll i'll uh force the uh, the lowest uh, few people like at least 25 percent of the team has to be made up the made up of the absolutely lowest units available i mean I think mostly subconsciously what I'm thinking of is if we do end up uh, running into the option to recruit Deneb, if I recruit every one of those different dragon types, then each of them has to potentially be used at one point. <laughs> but again, we'll deal with that when we get to it. So Chuan of the Warrior here, he's actually pretty solidly built for this point in the game, so no real worries there. Canopus is getting pretty good with his hammers. He did have a finisher. Okay, that, that more or less confirms it. Um, so I have Aqua Blast and uh, Spark Sphere and Enrage going on him, with the idea being that he's he's essentially got two missile options, as well as a buff option, as well as a AoE option, um, that he's just going to have on hand for essentially stacking up bonus damage using those two magic types. It's kind of situational, but I want him to at least, you know, start building towards something along those lines in case it can potentially be useful later. Uh, Sarah the Rogue, she'll be doing stuff. Sarah the Stronger Rogue, you know, she's got a, a bigger gun now. And then Kira the Whacking Wizard, or the Whacking Doctor, she's still there. Now we get to the fight that actually lasted through three devices. So I've actually been uh, kind of pumping out repaired PSPs at quite a rate this uh, this year. <laughs> Mostly because I bought a bunch of them for parts and I was kind of mi planning on making this like this uh, color coordinator project for the kids where I would go take multiple PSPs and like my son would get a blue one and my daughter would get a pink one and then I would keep one and you know maybe if my wife was interested I'd, I'd make her one and turns out 
she would prefer the Switch version of Spyro, and it turns out uh, my son really likes the fact that uh, one of the cars on Gran Turismo's name just like happens to match his name and his favorite color, but he wasn't really having it. Um, he just kept kind of throwing the thing aside. Um, my daughter, again, just stole my Switch. So <laughs> so instead, I was like, you know what, Skirt, I'm just going to fix all these up and uh, put them elsewhere. So the reason that I'm explaining this is because one of them was a PSP Go, the one that I did a review on a little bit ago. Um, so an interesting little quirk. Uh, for those unfamiliar with the internals of a PSP Go, uh, basically the uh, default one pretty much requires a memory card to save anything. It doesn't have any internal memory. The PSP Go uh, does, in fact, have a internal memory chip, and um, unfortunately, it turns out that when Tactics Ogre was created, it has a specific directory that it saves to. And when I'm doing these screenshots, it's using the in-game screenshot thing. Now, think about that for a second as to what issue we might run into in a moment here, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, continue on. So, by this point, we have gotten the Stun Fists, we have gotten the Poison Fists, and uh, we're... Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of running into this issue over and over where Vice is, he's a Terminator. Uh, he will basically one-shot almost anybody on the team. If we put Fortify, they can survive, um, and some of our tanks can survive, but overall, he's he's going to do some big hurt real bad. So we tried shoving him around with shields, we tried cornering him, we tried just keeping him away, and I, I kept trying all kinds of different approaches here, thinking like, man, this is pretty early for the suboptimal run to die, i got to say. Um, because overall our options are kind of limited. We do have to use this octopus after all. <laughs> and we can't really go out of our way to stall the fight because he'll just come in and attack everybody. Bear in mind he's fast enough to two round um, almost everybody on the team. So he's uh, he's a fast cutty boy and that's no uh, no good for us. And as you can see even their, uh, even their regulars are kind of doing a pretty solid job carving up our entire team. Alright, so... This continues on for a while. There's a few cases where I think I have him cornered, only to wind up with a situation like this, where all of a sudden all of the tanks go down one after another in a straight line, because he has essentially cut and run every one of them, and also left his knight in the middle in order to block everybody off from supporting each other. Honestly, clever tactics from the AI. So I started coming up with a strategy of locking in the, uh, the Cyclops to the left, attempting to recruit him, uh, taking out the Dragoon in the process, stalling out the Dragon on the right, and trying to lure uh, Vice around the tree in order to surround him with all of them, and then hopefully continue bashing them with the, uh, uh, with, uh, the uh, uh, Cyclops if we could recruit him. It wasn't working too great. And then I noticed that Miongi here, he's, um, he's got really high dexterity and actually is... He's some of our best... Well, he's by far our ranged, uh, best uh, ranged damage available. So... He ended up becoming a staple for this party. A couple times, I mistakenly ran it without uh, uh, without actually using... Um, oh, what the hell was that? Why is that one all zoomed in? Okay, I don't know what the hell just happened there. Okay. Why is this one zoomed in? That's so freaking weird. Okay, I don't know what that was about. Anyway, um... So... We continue. I like. I figured maybe we just have to try to get lucky here, but no, we had to have a more solid plan because, I mean, we could do almost no damage to this guy. He threw out damage like crazy, and he usually could get away if we ever tried to close him off. And unfortunately, all it took was one mend leaf in order for him to get back on his feet. So, you know, these strategies kept. Uh, Kept evolving over time, eventually weakening ended up becoming pretty useful. Uh, combining the uh, Berserker attacking at a diagonal, this isn't a good example of it, but combining the Berserker plus knockback plus attacking at a diagonal ended up working up pretty well. Uh, Mighty Strike uh, ended up uh, preventing his uh, counter, uh, terrifying impact from, uh, or rather, uh, the Terror Knight didn't have terrifying impact yet, but he did have some decent damage that he could put out. Even then, he usually ended up getting one shot as soon as he got close, but then the Cleric would always heal him up as soon as he started getting down. We weren't moving fast enough in order to be able to finish him off, so we had to get him farther away. And even then, we ran in cases like this where he just took out the entire team while we were trying to surround him. This guy basically, like, one vision turned him into Luke of Light, more or less. Uh, if you've played Suiko 2 before. <laughs> so, um... This continued for quite some time, about a month, in fact, um, of uh, different strategies, different attempts, of uh, just kind of different little tweaks to the same formula, on and off. I mean, I wasn't, like, sitting there grinding 24-7 trying to make this happen, 
But on and off, I just kept uh, coming back to it on breaks and giving it a shot and giving it a shot and having an idea and giving it a shot, and you get the idea here. But eventually, what ended up working was this separation strategy. And I believe that's actually these two are going to be the last two that we're going to get, yeah. Um, that's awkward. Okay, so. And we ran into something really weird here. In fact, this is something... Oh boy, this is something extra weird, now that I think about it. Because, uh, yeah, at this point, uh, we are missing several hundred screenshots. What gives? Hold on. Um, yeah, yeah, the eventual strategy, by the way, was just, like, plink him with magic stuff, stun the, uh, uh stun the healer, shield bash her away, and then kind of have the rest of the team and the heavies on the left, uh, smacking him while, uh, Breach was active. One quick pause, though, while I figure out where the hell these, the rest of these screenshots just went. Okie dokie, so, uh, oh, we got a problem. Um, well, okay, I already knew there was a problem, but it's even more of a problem than I thought, because, uh, okay, there's a, a couple issues here, and I'm actually really confused as to what this is now, so I think the rest of OV Suboptimal, we're just gonna do, um, we're basically just gonna have to do the, uh, the old video thing. Like, as, as funny as this format is, um, unfortunately, like, we're missing chunks, is the thing. So, originally, this was the moment where I switched over to the PSP Go. I thought that was going to be just my device going forward. Uh, but then it started hurting my hands to use. Um, and then also I was noticing that, that when I was saving screenshots, they were corrupting. Okay? Now, my understanding was that this was a directory issue for where it was saving. Because I saw those screenshots on the PSP 3000 when I went back and, uh, you know, was double-checking that that's what the issue was. But looking at it now, um, I backed these up in two separate locations, and I've got several junk files and then this. I don't know what that means. Because um, this is already towards the end of Chapter 2. This is uh, the Zapan fight. Basically, we got past the Zapan fight and then got up to, uh, what's it? Up to, actually, no, no, Zapan was the last one here. I'm, I'm thinking of a different run right now. Um, but we got up to Zapan, so... Uh, like, we went through all the whole thing with, uh, like, with the lib front and everything else, and, uh... Yeah, this is, um... Well, Suboptimal definitely meets the name. Um, but yeah. I do have a plan on how to hopefully fix all of that, but this is going to be that for part one. I mean, ultimately, what ended up happening... Uh, it kind of sucks that, that the screenshots are gone now. Because there was... Like, it, the original missing chunk was going all the way from the Vice fight, uh, going into... Um, let's see, it was about two fights past the Vice, uh, Vice fight that I actually went back and started noticing that uh, certain things were missing. But, I thought it was all all backed up after that point. Now, I'm starting to wonder if it's just a matter of if you can't save past, like, a certain hundred, you know, several hundred screenshots or something. Um, so, I don't know if that's part of the issue. Uh, honestly, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. that None of this is really making sense right now, because, I, like I said, I backed this up in two separate locations, so... Why it didn't save is beyond me. But, yeah, we, we, I mean, when, once we got to Zapan, we started getting just repeatedly run over, so that's kind of where it's stuck at the moment. Zapan is the second, uh, the second coming of Vice, more or less. Um, mostly because of the fact that we've, like, we did get a few more recruits along the way, but aside from, um, I, I want to say it was, like, a Berserker that was hitting really hard, as well as, uh, God, who was the other thing now? Sorry, it's been like a week since, or actually it's been almost two weeks since I've had a PSP on hand. I ended up selling all of them and uh, wanted to do a lot of this series going forward on a Retroid because, you know, a lot of stuff, including loading, like attempting to load corrupted saves even if they're corrupted, uh, which would allow me to use a lot of really, really old saves that I thought were long lost. That would potentially be possible, plus allegedly, you know, streaming off those things is a lot better. Um, would save a lot of logistical issues. I'll get into all that once it gets here, but, um... Oh, not to mention, I actually... It's basically an upgrade at a profit, and I can never say no to those. 
Like, if you sell your PSP for 150 and you get your uh, your Retroid for less than 100, that that'll do it. That'll do it. Um. Anyway, so that'll have to be that. Unfortunately, I'm I'm sorry. I thought there was uh, there was actually more to this, but apparently this is this is currently where it sits. I mean, I wanted to show a lot of the cooler tricks that were possible in later fights, like throwing people off of walls for the Bayon fight and stuff like that, but, uh... <sighs> there was a bunch of trickiness when it came to, uh, uh to, uh, using the, uh, the Libfront units for, um, uh, for the, uh, kind of the, uh, Liberation Trio, uh, fight there with Dagon. And, uh, and yeah, that was a really, really close one, because basically he was shredding everybody and ultimately it was his own unit that ended up screwing him over by putting a shadow in a weird spot and then he was in a weird corner and just ended up getting bashed down um but i guess that that's lost and that is uh that's sad times all right anyway moving on we'll figure out another way to do this see you then sorry